Day 11, traditional crystal set. Um, the past couple of days I've been playing around with various circuits for uh, for this whole advent calendar thing, and uh, I'd originally intended to build a medium wave receiver with a bit of regeneration, but I thought, man, yeah, why not give it a go with a crystal set? And uh, I wrote some postscript and generated a template for making cobweb coils. I uh, built one cobweb coil and uh, and I had a go, you know, just basically putting a polyvericon across it and seeing uh, that I could actually hear some of the more powerful local stations just with their crystal earpiece across it with no antenna at all. So that that seemed like I was uh, I was on the right track. I could see the signal on the crow and it was uh, like 100 millivolts or something. Um, so I uh, I decided that I'd uh, why not do a crystal set. It's a, you know, kind of a traditional kind of receiver. Doesn't require any batteries, which is always uh, always a plus. And uh, it's fairly easy to build. Fortunately, I happen to have a spool of uh, Litz wire. Now, this stuff can be pretty hard to get nowadays. I can't remember exactly where in the US I got this, but uh, I ordered it and brought it back with me one holiday I was over there. It's a pound spool of it. It wasn't particularly expensive. I think it was about $25. Nowadays, it's, uh, I'm told it's unobtainium, and it's, uh, it's quite difficult to get, but uh, I still have a fair bit left. So I built two of these coils, and uh, the actual receiver I'm going to show you is only using one of them. I just finished building this one and uh, in order to catch up I'll, I skipped making this into a pretty receiver mounted uh, properly with the polyvericons all nicely calibrated and etc. But the uh, the general circuit works and I can demonstrate it for you and uh, when I get a chance over the next few days I'll probably build it into a, a nice little setup on the desk with uh, probably get the two of these sitting on little stands with the polyvericon um, chinners and then you can place the two with respect to each other to, to change the coupling. The secret with these uh, always is to, to essentially it's a, it's a question of impedance matching. The um, one thing you might want to try is actually tap the diode down on the uh, the main tank coil to get a better uh, impedance match because at resonance you know parallel tuned circuits are quite high impedance. That The germanium diodes are not particularly high impedance although I've added a bit of uh, resistance across here to actually drain the leakage out and um, the crystal earphone is, essentially looks like a capacitor, so you've got to put some kind of load across the diode or else it won't be, you know, germanium diodes have a bit of leakage, so you'll see a lot of people don't put this resistor in here, but it works a whole lot better if you do. Um, I used a pot and varied it until I got the best performance. 68K was ideal for my particular diode. My particular diode, as you can see down in here, is a 1N34, I think. Uh, not entirely sure. It might be actually older than that, but uh, I played with a couple of different diodes. Uh, I played with using a, uh, a 1N5711 and a 1N4148. The, the shock D actually works particularly well, but it requires a bias. Now you can provide the bias with a uh, 1.5 volt battery and a resistor, even about a mega is fine, um, but that kind of defeats the purpose if you don't want a, a powered device at all. If you want a completely passive device, then the germanium diode just works and it's you know worth the try. The, uh, the Shakti diode actually works quite well if you warm it up with a hairdryer or, uh, or a soldering iron or something. It uh, so gets sufficient leakage and uh, it essentially partially turns on. And another alternative is to bias it with an oscillator. So you can use uh, the, the RF oscillator project here and put a coil across it of the appropriate uh, dimension. Probably four or 500 microhenries. 470 microhenries would be good um, standard preferred value. And you can use that to produce a local carrier and then zero beat it with the signal of interest. That will um, bias the diode and give you uh, kind of like a direct conversion receiver. It works particularly well and it works even better than the germanium diode, but again, it's not passive. It kind of ruins the spirit of it. But it does allow you to receive um, SSW, uh, SSB and uh, CW signals. So if you wanted to listen to the amateur bands with it, it would be the way to go. And we might actually do a, a little project on that later. I, I built some other cobweb coils and some high Q um, solenoidal coils and I've been uh, playing with that and I detected and um, got quite reasonable reception of uh, Radio Australia and uh, Radio New Zealand doing exactly that but that'll be the subject of a separate video. Alrighty, back to the circuit. Uh, front end tuner. Some people call it the toggle tuner because um, a chap called Tuggle, I think he's got an amateur radio call sign, I can't remember. Anyway, if you search for him on the web, there's a whole heap of stuff, and I haven't read it all. He's got a huge amount of work that he's done on modelling these uh, these systems and how to optimise them. Quite common also is uh, an impedance matching transformer to match the uh, crystal earpiece or a sound-powered um, 
headphones into the, the circuit for the absolute best sensitivity. This isn't necessarily a DX crystal set, but for local signals it works really well. I've used polyvericons, which are generally terrible because they have poor Q. I remember once I cooked one um, with only a few watts of RF power. They've, I think their Q, I remember roughly measuring one around 350 to 400, which is pretty abysmal for a capacitor. Most capacitors easily make 1,000 or 2,000, but it's quite hard to measure the Q of a capacitor precisely anyway. Um, you can measure it relatively with a, a known good inductor and we might talk about that in a video later. Measuring coil Q is particularly useful. Um, essentially you've got a, a two tune circuits that are coupled via their proximity. Um, you have fairly low coupling is ideal otherwise they'll you'll pull and um, the, optimizing the coupling you can do a lot of math or you can just try it out for the best signal makes it a bit more fun. Um, it's not particularly critical, you just slide them closer to each other or further apart until you optimize it. They will pull each other and you'll have to vary the uh, the capacitances so it's a multi-hand job tuning it up, but once you've got them both near resonance they won't pull too much. The coupling capacitor here, uh, I think the toggle tuner actually puts the capacitor between that and earth, but I put it between the antenna and the top of the tank. Possibly better to put it near the bottom because you can ground the rotor, but then again, you probably want to ground this one because it's actually across the tank and eh, either way around, one of the two is going to have to float, so topology-wise it doesn't really make much difference, I don't think. I put it here because it's more obvious how it works. It uh, reduces the, the raises the effective impedance of the antenna to the tank. And uh, again, I'll probably do a bit of maths on this or I'll at least link off to some of the uh, the really cool websites that, that do a lot of optimizations on this very simple um, design. Plenty of room for experimentation. Um, this particular receiver works just fine with the local stations. You see here I've got uh, an earpiece. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. It's it's quite loud if you stick it in your ear canal, but obviously uh, it doesn't couple particularly well to air. Well, if I put it up to the microphone on the camera, you might be able to hear it. It's just 2BL702. What are they talking about? Uh, some programming. Uh, what I also have here is I've hooked up a little one transistor amplifier. And that's uh, that's driving a uh, the day two amplifier. So you can see here this is the circuit, nothing special, it's not a particularly high quality amplifier, but uh, it amplifies the, the fairly small uh, amplitude audio frequency signal up to something that can drive the power amplifier quite nicely. Um, if you prefer, you know, lounge room chair kind of uh, reception as opposed to having to use the uh, the earpiece, the crystal earpiece obviously uh, no batteries, works forever. Antenna wise, antennas are very important. Antenna and ground is super important. Earthing, I've actually just got it connected to the mains protective earth, as you can see there on my power supply, the green line. Um, antenna, I'm using my, uh, my random wire antenna that's just strung along the side of my building. It's about 30 meters long, maybe a little bit less than that. It's in no way remotely resonant, but big chunk of metal does the job for now. Um, there are much better antennas you can have, and you can put loading chokes in here. and Another project that we might talk about is a way to measure the antenna capacitance and actually optimize the antenna. Anyway, this wasn't going to be a, an incredibly long video and it's going on for nine minutes now, so I think that's about it. We'll write up uh, the article at some point and talk about it in more detail. We'll include the postscript um, file that you can just send to your printer for generating the, the template. I just printed it out on and stuck it to this heavy cardboard that I rather like and then cut it out with a X-Acto knife. There's, so you have to have an odd number of slots if you're doing this yourself, so that each time round, if we zoom in here, focus up, the uh, the wires alternate between the front and the back of the uh, the card. This spaces them out, so it minimizes their um, distributed capacitance and the proximity effect, which gives the coil very high Q and uh, very low parasitic capacitance, which means it'll tune a long way with a with a capacitor and it will have particularly uh, low losses which is important for a crystal set because you're battling for everything you can get. Alrighty, um, yeah that's about it. We'll uh, see what we can come up with for day 12. Bye.